Controlling a robot hand is hard, especially if you want to have fine, dexterous hand control. Researchers at Meta and UC Berkeley came up with a foundation controller called Dexterity Gen. This allows robotic hands to manipulate a wide range of objects. Let's dive into the details of DexGen. If you're new here, make sure to check out the links in the video description and subscribe to learn more robotics and AI. So these two videos that you see right here shows the power of the DexGen model. On the left side is controlled by teleop, which means that the person is wearing a glove that controls the finger motion. And you can see that the object falls out of the hand because it has a hard time actually feeling and rotating and gripping the object by teleoperating it. So that's where DexGen comes in. It uses this foundation model that allows the hand to teleoperate a robotic hand and have a nice control of the object while having dexterous manipulation. So while it's actually quite easy for humans to do these tasks, to actually have a robotic hand do these tasks is actually pretty hard. So to understand the innovation that DexGen brings, I want to first talk about two types of robot learning. So to teach robots something, there's typically two ways to go about it. So the first way is human teleoperation or using imitation learning. So this is a process where you have a person controlling another robot by using something like a glove or a joystick. You also have a sim to real reinforcement learning. So this is where you use something like a reinforcement learning gym and you have the robot learn by using some reward and policy system. So the challenge with imitation learning, the first one is that there's no force feedback. So typically when you're controlling an object with your normal hand, like I'm taking this little cup lid, for example, that I made for my mic, when I'm touching this object, I can know the normal force and friction of this contact between my hand and the object. And this is what allows me to hold on to the object and manipulate it and do various things. So this concept of having force feedback is lacking in imitation learning, at least in the example that they showed, because with the glove, there's no really any force feedback. They probably have some vibration integrated, but you don't really know how hard you're pressing on the object. The second thing is that there's different kinematic structure and geometry or the fingertip shape. So there's essentially a mapping between two different kinematic structures. So the way your hand is described, all these in the individual joints and fingers, all of these are not exactly the same as the robot joints that you see in the Legro hand. So this will cause some difference in the actual mapping between the operator and the actual robotic hand. And also because the shape is different, so the actual contact between the object is not quite the same. You also have complex motions or high degree of freedom. So because of the nature of the hand, there's so many degrees of freedom, it becomes a very challenging task. And also we have inaccurate position, so only position controller can be used to apply force. So because again, there's no force feedback, they're relying on position error to know how much force that they're actually applying onto the object. So another challenge is with the reinforcement learning. So one thing is a domain gap or the sim to real. So what this means is, let's say you do some reinforcement learning and training and simulation. If you deploy it to the real world, it's not going to be exactly the same. So this is what the domain gap means. We also have task specific reward and it's difficult to scale. And what this means is that you could have a reinforcement policy that's tailored to, let's say, rotating a tennis ball in your hand. But let's say you want to extend that policy to rotating a pen, it may not work exactly the same. So this is what the task specific reward part means. And that's why it's a challenge for reinforcement learning. So the opportunities for imitation learning and reinforcement learning is that with imitation learning, it's actually pretty good for coarse motion commands. So the general motion of how the hand and finger positioning should be, the operator has a very good uh, input for the model in terms of how to do that. So like, you know, if you have an object on a table, you directly know how to position your fingers to grab the object. And with reinforcement learning, you have low level motion primitives. What this means is things like when there's an object in your hand, how does this do the hand rotation and translation? So the reinforcement learning can get a lot of data and figure out some of these primitives so that you can have better fine motion control. 
But first off, here's the setup that they use. So on the left, this is actually a Franca Panda arm. They have force torque sensors in them and have seven degrees of freedom. But you can see they have attached the robotic hand. This is the Allegro hand that Meta has been using. And then on the right side, this is their tele-operating glove. They have a hand tracker and a wrist tracker to let the user know and the model know the exact position of their hands. So you can see these objects here are the objects that they're doing in their real world testing. So it's a zero shot implementation because they haven't seen this and they're not doing any fine tuning with the real world data. But what you can see here is the, the general flow of their dex gen controller. So the way they're doing it is they're combining best of both worlds. So they're taking what's good about imitation learning and what's good about reinforcement learning and fusing it into one, which they call the dex gen controller. So we're going to have the course motion command that feeds into the foundation dexterity controller and the output will be a fine dexterous action. So you can see here, this is a general flow. You have a multi-task data set in simulation. This will pass into the DexGen controller with the training data. You're going to pass a state in, and the output will be some action. So this is going to have a learned action distribution that will figure out the likelihood of these different things. And once you have that on the right side, this is the inference phase. So the inference phase, you're going to have the robot hand holding the object. The teleop or the policy is going to have some motion input into the DexGen controller. And the output will be the actions, which will be our learned translation and rotations, which we learn from reinforcement learning. So here you can see this is a training data set pipeline. We're going to have an object model that passes into a grasp generation. You're going to get a grasp set that feeds into a simulation reinforcement learning data collection. And the output will be a grasp to grasp trajectories. So all of this, they use the any grasp to any grasp data set. And they use this to train all of their hand motion inside a simulation environment. So here you can see this is the flow of the diffusion model to the inverse dynamics model. So this is the part that's actually inside the DexGen controller. So basically opening up the black box. On the left, we have the motion conditioning, mode conditioning, and the state. These three things is what feeds into the diffusion model here. The output will be a motion and also takes in the state. The inverse dynamics model is going to be what finally gives us the output of the fine motions that we see. So here you can see that they also have ways to react to dangerous situations. So the accept case is when the hand motion is similar to what's acceptable and it'll continue to hold the object. There's going to be some cases where, let's say, you're holding an object and your hand is in a totally wrong position, whether it's like too open or too closed. It's going to reject the motion and try to do what's right to maintain contact with the object. So some future improvements that they're going to be working on is to add touch sensing in the training, add vision in the low-level controller, and also do some real-world fine-tuning since right now they're doing a zero-shot method. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.